a guy who was so good at taking lives he made it his profession. The story of Billy Frank Vickers and his shocking confession is like a dark secret that leaves us with more questions than answers. Can you imagine hearing a death row inmate confess to killing over a dozen people right before his execution? Intriguing, right? Buckle up, folks, as this video is one you wouldn't want to miss. On March 12, 1993, Philip Kinslow, a hard-working man in his 50s after finishing work, Kinslow locked up the store. As he reached his property gate, gunshots erupted. Kinslow fired back, then rushed into his car trying to escape. However, he crashed into a tree in his panicked state. Kinslow's wife called 911 immediately, hoping help would arrive in time. Paramedics tried to save him, but the bullets had hit him directly, piercing his chest and right arm, causing him death. Police investigated the shooting area and found key evidence, a plastic bag, duct tape, and a ski mask with hair strands, like gold in sand. But did this key evidence prove to be enough to catch the murderer? Let's find out. Then the next day, just two miles from the crime scene, officers tripped upon a man hobbling with a makeshift crutch, a tree branch. It was none other than Billy Frank Vickers, also known as Sonny, a car salesman with a notorious past. But what was the connection between Billy's and the untimely demise of Philip Kinslow? We'll find it later. In October 1988, Billy and friends were caught with over five pounds of marijuana. Then in April 1990, Billy set a restaurant on fire twice. After he had a mysterious connection to a murder case in August 1989, rumored to be involved. He was also a friend of James Kent, the alleged shooter, and both were arrested in October 1988 for marijuana possession. Well, after that, he ended up working with the Texas Rangers to avoid facing any charges for a certain murder. Talk about a career change! Who needs a 9 to 5 when you can become a crime-fighting cowboy, right? He wasn't just guilty of one crime, he had a laundry list of misdeeds to his name. Then there was a wire recording of conversations between Billy and his buddies discussing a murder from December 1990. They forgot that evil plans shouldn't be recorded. The authorities found out, and in spring 1991, Billy's, Shrine, and Ken pleaded guilty. They were then sentenced to life in prison, but received a comparatively light sentence of just five years in jail. Now this time, it was the shooting of a man named Phil Kinslow. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Here you can find the connection between Billy and Philip. As police found Billy at the crime scene and decided to question him about Phil Kinslow's murder, shockingly, he confessed and implicated two others, Tommy Perkins and Jason Martin. Billy and Perkins targeted Kinslow, intending to rob him of his money and food stamps. Wearing ski masks and armed, they confronted him, but he fought back and escaped, leaving them behind. The next day, Perkins discovered Kinslow's death. Later, matching bullets were found in Perkins' car, and a bullet from Billy's knee matched Kinslow's gun. The evidence was piling up against Billy faster than dirty laundry after a week-long vacation. Eventually, Tommy Perkins faced trial in 1993 for terrible crimes. But what about the other guy? Jason Martin, too, testified against their partners. Perkins got a life sentence. Later in October, Billy Frank Vickers faced trial. Strong evidence led to a guilty verdict in just 40 minutes by the jury. He was sentenced to death. On December 9, 2003, the execution date was set. Surprisingly, Billy's was spared at the last minute, leaving everyone stunned. The execution was rescheduled for January 28, 2004, and Billy had something else in his mind. Strapped to the gurney, with all eyes on him, he dropped a bombshell confession. He admitted to the murder of Philip Kinslow, and then in a chilling moment, he casually mentioned, There were several more that I had done or been a part of. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how many. There must be a dozen or fourteen, I believe. But Billy wasn't done yet. Billy mentioned a prisoner in Lamar County, Texas, who was serving time for murder. Who was this mysterious inmate? What was Billy's confession about? Billy didn't give a name, but he insisted that the poor soul was innocent. He even claimed that the inmate's father was the real culprit. And just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, Billy dropped one more name in his deathbed confession, Colin Davis. Now this guy had quite the reputation. He was charged with shooting his own wife. In 1972, oil tycoon Colin Davis faced a bitter divorce. On August 2, 1976, tragedy struck when Priscilla's daughter was shot. Priscilla accused Cullen. He went to trial claiming to be the richest man ever on trial for murder. Released, drama continued. In 1978, 
he was arrested again for hiring a hitman to harm Priscilla. Despite evidence, he was released again in 1979. Now, after the last three minutes of confession, Billy claimed that the heinous acts he committed, the lives he took, were nothing personal but simply a means to make a living. Can you imagine that? Murder for a paycheck? He also expressed remorse and apologized to his family for the grief he caused. The district attorney dismissed Billy's deathbed confession as a final act of manipulation, refusing to believe there were more victims. A mind game till the end. No connections were found between Billy and other crimes since his execution 17 years ago. Execution delayed once due to legal battles. In the end, he died at 6.21 p.m., six minutes after the deadly amount started. As we wrap things up, what are your thoughts on Billy's last-minute confession? Was it a sincere apology or just a last-ditch effort to manipulate the system? Comment your thoughts below.